part two. This is where this is where I do the music and the background. The art, the background art. I wanted to make it something abstract so that uh, it looks cool, but you can focus on the characters too. And I wasn't really sure what direction it was going to go in. And I'm just like, oh, let's apply more filters and and hue saturation. Oh, and then there's our there's our thing. I wanted to make sure we got the values bright and light, bright and dark, so that uh, to, to, to be composed right. So just to draw the attention to the center, you can see I'm adding more details just to make stuff look a little bit less flat. I save that, get that into the program, and ta-da, there it is right there. At this point I'm thinking, hey, it's looking a little bit dead. The camera's not moving at all. It's very clear. Uh, it would be a great idea to add some camera movement to help mask some of that computer generatedness. That's just another thing where you want to add more and more organic things to make uh, the lifelessness a little bit less apparent. So I'm adding a bit of camera movement so that it follows the balls. I was thinking of just doing a sort of noise, just a 2D noise over time, but uh, I thought it would be a little bit more meaningful if it was trying to follow a ball, because that's already a source of entropy, so why not make it follow the ball? The camera's actually lagging by like half a second, but but I think because of that, it's hard to tell that it's following the ball, but it really is. And I wanted to make it subtle enough that it's not like super flashy, but instead it's just sort of masking some of the small, uh, it's like raising the noise level. There you go. See, you can see the background is not changing at all, but soon it will. And there's that. Now I'm going to like start doing the render. Yeah, this is the rendering. See, it looks like a normal speed, but it's actually super slow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just wait for it to render long enough, and then I'm going to continue to play it at, at human watchable speed. See, there's the human watchable speed. There's that. At this point, I'm, I think I'm going to start jumping into the music at some point, but I can't tell. Maybe I'm applying the different colors. You can see a tab open that I have is using the magic number, magic ratio, I don't remember. Some sort of value that you can add it and it will never loop over. It'll, you always get unique colors for stuff and that's useful. Didn't use it at all in the final product. I eventually just uh, used some hard coded colors. I think that turned out well too. Sometimes it's really easy to over engineer and be like, oh, what if we want a thousand balls? What if we want a thousand unique colors? But no. Yeah, so this is a melody that I um, a melody that I wrote like like in January, I think. Either January or February. And he thought, hey, why not use it for this video? But he did it in reason and I don't really use reason so much anymore because I'm really getting getting to like FL. I really like Edison. There's nothing like in reason. I think that's the main reason I switched away from reason is because it's really hard to edit clips that you've already put in there. There's like a keynote by the CEO or something of Propellerhead Software where he says, like, in a very arrogant way, like, we've, we've already done all we can do with reason, you know? People are saying, oh, our product, what more could we possibly add? Well, this is something you can add. You can add uh, some fine-tuned audio editing. I haven't, like, you, can, you can't even crossfade stuff. I mean, you can. Actually, you can. You can crossfade stuff, but... The point is, I would really like to see something like this in reason. I, I don't, I can't live without it. It's really great for editing uh, clips. Like, even adding reverb to a clip without having to like create a whole new channel and having to uh, maybe even bounce it out if I want to like pop off the reverb or play with the reverb in some other way. Having this little sandbox is really useful and that's also why I like Audacity. Even though Audacity is a terrible piece of garbage software that is horrible to use, but is a really good program because I'm able to just like play with sand in my hands. It's just like so, so fine tuned that you can like zoom down into the sample level and like get rid of the click that way. You can't do that in, in Reason. It's just difficult. I grew up with Reason. I really like Reason, but I can't keep using it. I'm sorry. What's going on here? I am changing the delay. Also, there's Valhalla Room. I really like that reverb. If you see any registered names, any registered two names that look a little bit sketchy, the most obvious reason is the correct. Here I am. Oh, the, and this is the part where we discovered the vo vocal sample that I just fell in love with. I love it. It's just a, such, a, such a cute voice that I really like. Amazing melody amazing carrier for the melody. 
And I'm glad that I found it because I found it completely by accident. I don't even remember what it's called. It's, it's just like a preset. So, so it's, it's not, it's called Art of Voice. It's a Harmer preset. Very great. I think I like stripped away some of the extra uh, modulation that adds to it, some of the effects. I don't know. But that sample's really good. I mean, that's really the, the core of the sound. I think what I'm doing now is I'm massaging the melody a bit. I don't know. I'm doing something. That's all I know. Either way, I, because I've been getting more into FL Studio and being able to more easily uh, use Edison and uh, massage all these samples very easily, it's very addictive to just like keep adding sounds like like, oh, this riser should begin with something that gives a little more motivation, a little more reason to appear. Oh, and then it should also end with something. I should like add an effect to sort of lead it out. You know, and because of that, it's yeah, it's very easy to add instrument ornamentation. And I think this was definitely kind of on the crowded. I'm starting to yeah, like make every single mix crowded with all these like blips and bloops and squeaks and squaps and everything like that. But it's a lot of fun to do it anyway. And it's starting to become easier to understand why a lot of people are saying that it's really great to sort of sketch things out easily and creatively, like a sketchbook, kind of like processing, but sketch it out like, sketch out songs creatively in FL Studio because of the freeform way that the layers are arranged. They don't, they don't correspond to the mixing channels. That's something that kind of reminds me of Flash almost, like, like Flash, all of all the objects you have on your timeline can be on any layer except that that determines the order that they're sorted but you don't have one layer per object and that's something I really like about Flash as opposed to like Blender or, or Maya or whatever uh, where you have one layer that kind of sticks there forever and that's something I like about FL Studio too is that you don't you can kind of rearrange them however you want you can share, share that vertical space and it doesn't blow up over time and this is that percussion I think one thing that really helps a lot is having a lot of samples that you really like and just being able to plop them in, just find some good ones. And if you're like us running out of inspiration, you know, you don't have enough thoughts inside your brain, you can just like browse through your whole library and say, hey, that sounds cool. Why not put it in? Hey, that doesn't sound cool. Let's put it in Edison, try to make something cool out of it. And it works out just fine. Because of that, I think it's definitely becoming a lot more of a positive experience that's like very creative. Be like, oh, yes, let's try that. Let's try that. And it, I think, turns out, things turn out a lot better and a lot more fun. I think this is the, the tubular bells that I'm adding. I really like how easy it is to do pitch bend too, as opposed to reason. It's a lot easier to, I really like those, that, that triangle shape that you can, the glide notes as they're called. Uh, it's, I definitely feel like I have a lot more control, even though I haven't been using it as long. But the glide notes, uh, being able to pull in the samples, it's all very good. I think, yeah, at this point, I'm trying to test out, test out my cool new track with my cool new video. And it's almost a bit of a game to try to get them to line up because I'm pressing space, alt tab, space. Because of that, you're going to see me switch back and forth because it's hard to get it perfectly lined. I think Evil Studio can input video so that you can test it, but I don't know. Anyway, I wouldn't want to render out the video. I don't know if it can deal with frame sequences or whatnot. I don't know. But for the most part, if it's like on beat, it should be fine. And then there's contact. Also, if you see any sketchy registration, you'll know why as well. There's my Abacaba video. I'm, there was an instrument that I really liked in the Abacaba outro music that I made in 2015 that had a either a French horn or some other, some other brass woodwind instrument that I thought had a really nice tone that like sat really well in the mix. I don't know if it sat well in this mix, but I wanted to add that element to it. Like how there's like the big, big percussion, and then there's also that horn. I don't know the words. And yeah, once again, being able to pop things into, uh, into Edison and change the EQ, that's something that I just can't do with as much freedom and reason. And, and the wave, the different curves, you can like change the interpolation. The wave stuff is really good. I'm getting quite addicted to panning something left and right really fast. All right, here's me listening. Listen again. Changing the decay of something. VEC symbols three. 
vengeance samples. I got vengeance samples in there. And you can see there's like very tiny little, very narrow, uh, very narrow glide notes. I think that's like a riser that I have before the melody starts kicking in. I have this riser that fades in, but then I have it like go. I think you can hear that. I think it stands out pretty well in the track. Symbols, ride number 26, number three. That's just another layer of percussion. I'm adding a lot of these different risers and, and blips and blops. This one is, it's something. Yeah, with some of these, I think one thing that I really liked doing was having very short samples that don't last very long. If I kind of muddy everything up with uh, reverb or having stuff with long tails, it's very difficult to get them to all sit right uh, in the spectrum. But if I have them really short and kind of like cutting between them very harshly, it's actually just a lot easier. It's almost a cheat, but it, it also just makes it sound a lot more poppy. And that's something that I wanted here. I wanted it to be a lightweight thing that uh, was lightweight both in its melody and in the way that it was, aside from the big percussion, but, but that's a different thing. And here's me trying to do like a roll of different sorts of percussion that are all very reverby. So I'm going back over my own words again. Here's a riser, there's different sample. There's different samples to sort of fill up the air. Make it seem like just like one basic melody. I'm adding other things just to keep things sounding like conscious, I guess. It's like, hey, I'm about to do this now. Here's me signaling that. I just did that, so here's the result of that. That's my follow through. And that's what that's all about. I have a, a pattern called Kitty. I'm not really sure why. One thing I don't really like about Flash, I was going to say, is that you got to give a name to every symbol. That's something that I definitely... I think it's similar in FLC. That you gotta give a name to any pattern. I'm not sure if I can really get used to that. Sometimes I'm just like, I make a symbol in Flash and it's just there to group things together to give another a hierarchy. Like I just want things to move together. And I don't want to give it a name. It's only going to be used once. That was, that's definitely something I should. It's animation. I was kind of like, yeah, I'm just going to throw it together and just, just, just be there just for the sake of getting the message across that, oh, there's Ice Cube there, there's Golf Ball. These are the people without arms. Oh, they become sad. I was like, you know, I was, I was playing with fire before with the program stuff. And it's like, now I feel like I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm treading through quicksand or whatever to, mi to mix some metaphors very, very badly. It's me working with Swivel. And then, and that, uh, the way the screen uh, grows vertically is, is something from a, I thought was a really cool effect. Just because I saw it in a BTS music video. And I think this wraps it up. That's it. That was a really fun video to make. It took about a week in total. And I'm not sure how much I learned, but I had a lot of fun. And I don't usually make a lot of content in general. So to be able to make content was a great experience. And I'm glad that a lot of people watched it. And I hope that seeing this video maybe makes it a little bit easier for you to make something similar to it. Definitely recommend processing. FL Studio is great. And... And I guess work fast and loose is something that, that I was able to do. I'm not usually able to do that. See you next week.